Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon, but oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword and won thy love, doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, with reveling. Sir, some people to see you. Thank you. Dismissed. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Ah, uh, full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. Stand forth, Demetria. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And, my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast, by moonlight, at her window sung, feigning with feigning voice, verses of feigning love. With cunning, thou hast filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And my gracious Duke, be it so, she would not hear before your grace, consent to marry Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be to this gentleman, Demetrius, or to her death, according to our law, immediately provided for in this case. Hmm. What say you, Hermia? Demetrius is a, gentle, a worthy gentleman? I wouldn't my father look but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I know not by what power I am made bold, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Hmm. Neither to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. Whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. Take time to pause. And by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else wed Demetrius, as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Uh, relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. Hey, you have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. You, do you marry him? Scornful Lysander. True, he hath my love. And what is mine? My love shall render him, and she is mine, and all my right to her, I do estate unto Demetrius. I am my lord as well derived as he is well possessed. My love is more than his, and, which is more than only boast can be, I am beloved of Demetrius Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'm about to to his head, made love to Nader's daughter Helena, and won her soul, and she, sweet lady, dotes. Don't don't think idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I've heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being overfull of self affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you upon to death or to a vow of a single life. Come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love? Oh, now, my love, why is your cheek so pale? How, how tense the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could well be teen them from the tempest of my eyes. I mean, if aught that I could ever read, or ever hear by tale or history, uh, the course of true love never did run smooth, but either it was 
Lost in blood? Oh, cross, too high to be enthralled too low. Uh, or else makes scraft in, in respect of years. Oh, spite, too old to be engaged too young. Or, or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell, to choose love by another's eyes. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and there, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. And to that place, the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, there will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, in that same place where thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Demetrius. Oh, look, here comes Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena, wither away. Call you me fair, that fair again unsay. Demetrius loves your fair, O oh happy fair. Your eyes are load stars and your tongue sweet air, more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear. Oh, teach me how you look and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown upon him, but he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smiles such skill. I give him curses, but he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. Oh. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty, would that fault were mine. Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. <laughs> Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe, Doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with, with liquid pearl the bladed grass, a time that lover's flights doth still conceal. Through Athens' gates have we devised a steal. And in the wood, where often you and I upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow, pray thou for us. And good luck, grant thee thy Demetrius. Take word, Lysander, we must starve our sight from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius dote on you. How happy some or others can be. Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius think not so. He will not know what all, but he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I admire of his qualities, I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But here in me nigh to enrich my pain to have his sight thither and back again. To call them generally, man to man, according to the script. Here is the scroll with every man's name, who thought fit, across all Athens to play an hour interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, say what the play treats on, and then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. 
Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a Mary. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves! Oy vey. Answer, as I call you, uh, Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready, name the part I am for, and proceed. And Nick Bottom, you are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. Name the rest of the players. <clears throat> Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Uh, Flute, uh, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? But it is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. Oh, that's all one. And you shall play it in a mask. And that, and you can speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Tisby too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Disney, Disney. Oh, Pyramus, thy lady dear, thy lover dear, and lady dear. No, no, no. You must play Pyramus. And flute you, Thisbe. Well, proceed. <clears throat> Robin Starveling, uh, the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Robin Starveling, you must take uh, Thisbe's mother on you. Uh, Tom Snout, the tinker. Okay. Here, Peter Quince. Uh, Snout, you, Pyramus's father, myself, uh, Thisbe's father. Um, Oh, snug the joiner, the lion's part, and I hope this is a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written, pray you, if it be given to me, for I am slow of study? You may do it, extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion too. I will roar so that I will make the duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. Roar. 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 And you, you should do it too terribly. You would fright the Duchess and the ladies if they were shrink, and that were enough to hang us all. That would hang us all. Every, Every mother's, mother's son. son. I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you and tour any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus. For Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a most proper man, as you shall meet on a summer's day, a most gentleman-like man, and therefore you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. And masters, here are your parts. And I would entreat you and request you and desire you <laughs> to con them by tomorrow night, meet me in the palace wood, a mile without the town, by moonlight, and there shall we rehearse. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains. Be perfect. Adieu. We're at the Duke's Oak, we meet. Enough! Hold our cut bow springs! How now, spirit? Whither wander you? I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's fear. And I serve the fairy queen to do her orb upon the green. I must go wander here and seek some dewdrops to hang a pearl on every cowslip's ear. Farewell, thou lob of spirits, I'll be gone. Our queen and all our elves come here anon. 
the king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed, the queen come not within his sight, for Oberon is passing fell in wrath, because she, as her attendant, hath a lovely boy stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling, and jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train, to trace the forest wild, but she perforce withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. Either I mistake your shape and making quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are you not he that frights the maids in the villagery? Those at Hobgoblin, they call you, and sweet puck, you do their work, and they shall have good luck. Are you not she? Thou speaks to right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. The room, fairy, here comes Oberon. And here my mistress. Would that he were gone. Titania. What? Jealous of Oberon? Very skip it. I have forsworn his bed and company. Carry rash wanton, am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. But why art thou here, come from the farthest step of India? But that forsooth, the bouncing Amazon, your buskin mistress, your warrior love, Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give her bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport therefore the winds piping to us in vain as in revenge have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs which falling in the land have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents therefore the moon the governess of floods pale in her anger washes all the air and rheumatic diseases do abound and through this distemperature, we see the seasons change, the spring, the summer, the childing autumn, the angry winter, change their wanted liveries, and the mazed world, in their increase, knows not which is which. Is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. The mother was a votress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air, oh, hath she gossiped by my side. But she being mortal, of the boy did die, and for her sake, I rear up her boy, and for her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance still after Theseus' wedding day, if you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away. We shall try downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way, thou shalt not from this grove, till I torment thee for this injury, my gentle puck. Come hither, fetch me this flower, the herb I showed thee once, 
the juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb and be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle around the earth in 40 minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eye. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander, and where Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Thou toldst me they were stolen unto this wood. Hence, get thee gone and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. <laughs> do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that, do I love you the more? Demetrius, I am your spaniel. And the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am to follow you. What worser place can I beg in your love? Yet a place that I respect with me than to be used as you use your dog. Tempt me not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. I'm sick when I look not on you. I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and lead thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The, the wildest pet that such a heart as you. Let me go. Oh, oh, oh thou, thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. Aye, in the temple, in the town, the field. You do me mischief, by Demetrius. Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph, ere he do leave this grove. Thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thee give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows. There sleeps Titania, some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on, affect it with some care, that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me ere, the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. <laughs> song. Sing me now asleep. For thy true love take, love and languish for his sake, be it ounce or cat or bear. When thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. Fair love, you 
you faint with wandering in the wood, and to speak troth, I forgot our way. We'll rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you out of bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. Oh, one turf shall serve as pillow for us both. Oh, one heart, two bosoms, and one troth. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie farther off yet. Do not lie so near. Oh, take the sense sweet of my innocence. Love takes the meaning in love's conference. I mean that my heart unto yours is knit, so, so that but one heart we can make of it. Two bosoms you know, interchanged with an oath, so then two bosoms in a single troth. And by your side, no bedroom you deny. For lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. Lysander riddles very prettily. Now, much be true, my manners and my pride. If Hermia meant to say Lysander lied, but gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off in human modesty, such separation as may well be said becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. Here is my bed. Sleep, give the others rest. With half that wish, the wisher's eyes be pressed. Through the forest I have gone, but Athenian found I none. <gasps> Who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. And hear the maiden sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Churl, upon thy eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. When thou wakes, let love forbid sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Stay, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee, hence, and do not haunt me thus. Oh, will thou darkling leave me? Do not so. Stay on thy peril. I alone will go. Oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia, wheresoe'er she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? Not with salt tears. If so, my eyes are oftener washed than hers. No, no, I'm as ugly as a bear. For beasts that need me run away for fear. <coughs> but who is here? Lysander, on the ground? Dead or asleep? I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. Oh. <coughs> I'm on through fire, I will, for thy sweet sake. Transparent in hell, na nature shows art. And through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? How fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Say not so, Lysander, do not say so. What though he love your Hermia, Lord, what though? That Hermia still loves you, then be content. Content with Hermia? No. I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not change a raven for a dove? The will of man is by his reason swayed, and reason says, you are the worthier maid. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? It's not enough, it's not enough, young man, that I did never, no, nor never can, deserve a sweet look from Demetrius's eye. But you must flout my insufficiency? Good troth, you do me wrong, good sooth you do, in such disdainful manner me to woo. But fare you well, perforce I must confess, I thought you lord of a much more gentleness. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there. Never mayest thou come Lysander near, for as a surfeit of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing to the stomach rings. So thou, my surfeit and my heresy, of all be hated the most of me. In all my powers, address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Ooh. Aye, me for pity, what a dream was here. 
Lysander, look how I do quick with fear. Me thought a serpent ate my heart away and you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander, what removed? Lysander, Lord, what, out of hearing, gone, no sound, no word. Alack, where are you? Speaking if you hear. Speak of all loves, I swoon almost with fear. Nay, then I well perceive you are not near. Either death or you I'll find immediately. marvelous convenient place for our rehearsal. Peter Quince. What say us Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword and kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? By or Lakin, a parlous fear. I believe we should leave the killing out when all is done. Not a wit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue. And let the prologue seem to say, we will do no harm with yeah. the sword. And that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the better assurance, tell him that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. <laughs> this will put them out of fear. Will not the ladies be afraid of the lion? I fear it, I promise you. A lion amongst ladies is a most dreadful thing. Nay, he himself must speak, though, saying, Fair ladies, I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were a pity. I am no such thing. I am a man, as other men are. And there let him be named his name, and tell him plainly that he is snug. Enjoy. Well, it, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. That is, to bring moonlight into a chamber, or you know, Pyramus and Disby meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine the night we play the play? A, a calendar, a calendar, look at the almanac. Find out moonshine, find out moonshine. Yes, yes, it does, it does shine that night. <laughs> by then, may you leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. But there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber. For Pyramus and Thisbe, as the story says, did talk through the chink in a wall. You can never bring in a wall? Oh, what say you, Bottom? <laughs> Some man or other must present wall and let them hold his fingers. Thus, and through the cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. Well, if that may be, then all is well. Come sit down, every mother's son. Every mother's son, sit down. And rehearse your parts. What hemp and homespuns have we swaggering here, so near the cradle of the fairy queen? What? A play toward? I'll be an auditor. An actor, too, perhaps, if I see cause. <laughs> uh, speak, Pyramus, this be sent forth. Give me the flowers of odious savor sweet. Odorous, odorous. odorous savor sweet. So hath thy breath, my dear, this be dear. Mm, but hark, a voice. Stay thou here but a while, and by and by I will to thee. Stranger pyramus than air played here. <laughs> must I speak now? Very must you, for you know, must understand he goes but to see a noise he heard and is to come again. Most radiant Pyramus, most lily white of hue, I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninnis's tomb, man, Ninnis's tomb. Why, well, you must not speak that yet. That you answer to Pyramus. Oh, you speak all your part at once, cues and all. Uh, Pyramus, enter, your cue is passed, it is never tire. <laughs> oh, as true as truest horse, that yet would never tire. If I were fair, Thisbe, I were only thine. <laughs> Oh, monstrous! Oh, strange! We are haunted! Pray, masters! Fly, masters! Fly! Fly! 
Oh! Why did they run away? <laughs> this is knavery of them to make me a feared. Oh, who oh, bottom? How art changed? What do I see on thee? What do you see? You see an asset of your own, do you? Oh, bless thee, bottom. Bless thee. Thou art translated. I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me. To fright me if they could. I will not stir from this place to do what they can. I will walk up and down here, and I will sing that they shall hear. I am not afraid. Ho, ho, the rotten bog and bog down in the valley, oh. Ho, ho, the rotten bog and the bog down in the valley, oh. On that bog there was a tree, a rare tree, a rotten tree in the tree, a hole in the hole in the bog and the bog down in the valley, oh. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored of thy note, and my eye is enthralled to thy shape, and thy fair virtues force per force doth move me on the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet, to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so, neither. But if I have wood enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve mine own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore go with me, and, I, and I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and I will purge thy mortal grossness, so that thou shalt like an airy spirit, though. Peace blossom, cobweb, and my mustard seed. Ready? And I. Where shall we go? Where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries, and pluck the wings from painted butterflies, and the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Not to him else and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal. Hail. Hail. I cry, your worship's mercy, heartily. I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. I shall desire you of more acquaintance, Master Cobweb. Well, what is your name, honest gentleman? Ease, Blossom. I pray you commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother. Your name, I beseech you, sir? Mustard seed. I, de I desire your more acquaintance, good mustard seed. All wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. <laughs> Next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What night rule now about this haunted grove? My mistress with a monster is in love. Near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals that work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play intended for a great Theseus nuptial day. The shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented, in their sport forsook his scene and entered in a break, when I did him at this advantage take, an ass's knoll I fixed on his head. <laughs> In a few moments, so it came to pass, Titania waked and straightway loved an ass. <laughs> this falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, 
that is finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he wakes, of force she must be eyed. Hermia! Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Oh, why rebuke you him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Now, I but chide, but I should use thee worse, for thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in a sleep, being more shoes and blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. Uh, so should the murdered look, and so should I, pierced through the heart with your stern cruelty. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Ah, uh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. Oh, dog, out oh, cur, thou drivest me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth be never numbered among men. Uh, you spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege never to see me more, and from thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain, so sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow for debt, that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe, which now in some slight measure it will pay. For this tender here, I make some stay. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice on some true love sight. About the wood, go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. All fancy sick she is, and hale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go. <laughs> Look how I go. Swifter than arrow from the Tartar's bow. <laughs> Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye when his love he doth espy. Let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be! Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Well, why do you think I should win scorn? You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, oh devilish holy fray. These vows are Hermia's. Will you give her or? Weigh oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none in my mind. Now you give her or. Demetrius loves her and loves not you. Oh, Helena, goddess, nymph, perfect, divine. To what my love shall I compare thine eyne? Crystal is muddy. Oh, how ripe and show thy lips those kissing cherries tempting grow. When thou holdst up thy hand, oh, let me kiss this princess of pure white, this seal of bliss. Oh, spite. Oh, hell. I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were civil and knew courtesy, you would not do me thus much injury. Can you not hate me as I know you do? But you must join in souls and mock me too? If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so. You both are rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena? You are unkind, Demetrius, be not so. For you love Hermia, this you know I know. And here, with all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena to me bequeath, whom I do love and will do to my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Oh, Lysander, keep thy Hermia, I will none. Hey, if e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her, but as guestwise sojourned. And now to Helen is at home returned, there to remain. <laughs> Helen, is that so? Oh, look where thy love comes. Yonder is thy dear. 
thou art not by mine eye, Lysander found mine ear. I thank it brought me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? <laughs> why should he stay whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Well, Lysander's love that would not let him by. Fair Helena, who more in gilts than night, than all your fiery o's and eyes of light. Well, why seekest thou me? Could not this make thee know that the hate I bear thee may be leave thee so? You speak not as you think it cannot be. Lo, oh, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious maid, injurious Hermia, injurious maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? Is all the counsel that we two have shared, the sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent, when we have cheered the hasty footed time for parting us? Oh, is it all forgot? All school days, friendship, childhood, innocence. And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly, tis not maidenly. Our sex, as well as I, may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not, it seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face and make your other love, Demetrius, to call me goddess, nymph, divine, and rare, precious, celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore does Lysander deny your love, so rich within his soul, but by your setting on, by your consent? I understand not what you mean by this. I do persever counterfeit sad looks, make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink each at other, hold the sweet jest up. But very well, tis partly mine own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Ah, oh, excellent. Wait, do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Helen, I love thee by my life, I do. I swear by that which I will lose for thee to prove him false that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come! Lysander, where to tends all this? Oh, way away. Oh, <laughs> no, sir, seem to break loose, take on you who would follow, but yet come not. You are a tame man. Go. Hang off, thou cat, thou, thou burr, vile thing. Let loose, or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. Why, why are you grown so rude? What change is this, sweet love? Outloathed medicine, hated potion hence. Hate me? Wherefore? What news, my love? Am not I Hermia? Are not you Lysander? Why then you left me, oh, the gods forbid. In earnest, shall I say? I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain, nothing truer. Tis no jest, and I do hate thee. I love Helena. Oh, me. You thief, you canker blossom, you thief of love! What, have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fine if faith, have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? I find you counterfeit, you puppet, you! Puppet? Why so? I that way goes the game. Now I well perceive that she has made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, her height forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maple? Speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I have no gift in shrewishness. I am a right maid for my cowardice. Let her not strike me. You perhaps may think because she is something lower than myself that I could match her. Lower, hark again. Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you. 
Save this in love unto Demetrius. I told him of your stealth into this wood. And now, so you will let me quiet go to Athens, will I bear my folly back and follow you no further? Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. Why get you gone? Who is it that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave her behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius! Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. Oh, no, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. No. Oh. When she is angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a fixin' when she went to school, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Little! Nothing but low and little! Let me come to her! Get you gun, you dwarf! You minimus of hindering not grass made, you bead, you acorn! Now, follow if thou darest to try who's right, of thine or mine, is most in Helena. Nay, foe, I'll go with thee cheek by jowl. You, mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you. I nor longer follow in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray. My legs, though, are longer to run away. I am amazed and know not what to say. This is thy negligence. Still thou mistakest or else commit it to thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. And so far, I am glad it so did sort, as this their jangling I esteem a sport. Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Ha, therefore, Robin, overcast the night, and leave these testy rivals so astray, as one come not within another's way, till o'er their brow death counterfeiting sleep, with leaded legs and batty wings doth creep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath a virtuous property. When they next wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. Whilst I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy. And then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. My fairy lord, this must be done with haste, for night's swift dragons cut the clouds full fast. We may affect this business yet ere day. Up and down, and up and down. I will lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready, where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Follow me then to plainer ground. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward. Art thou fled? Speak in some bush. Where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars? Telling the bushes that thou look'st for wars. Huh. Yea, art thou there? Follow my mm. voice, we'll try no man who <laughs> here. He goes before me and still dares me on. When I come where he calls, then he is gone. The villain is much lighter heel than I. I follow fast, but faster he did fly. And follow him am I in dark, uneven way, and here will rest me. <laughs> oh, come thou gentle day. For if but once thou show me thy gray light, I'll find Demetrius. I'll revenge this spite. Ho, 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 coward, why comest thou not? Where art thou now? Come hither, I am here. Nay, then, thou mockst me. Thou shalt by this dear, if ever thy face by daylight see. Now go thy way. Faintness constraineth me to measure out my length on this cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. <laughs> a weary night, a long and tedious night. Abate thy hours, shine comforts from the east, and sleep that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye. Steal me a while from mine own company. Yet but three? Come one more. Two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes. 
cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Never so weary, never so in woe. I can no further crawl, no further go. Here will I rest thee till the break of day. Heaven shield Lysander, if they mean a fray. On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover remedy. When thou wakest, thou takes true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. Jack shall have Jill, naught shall go ill, the man shall have his mare again, and all will be well. Come, sit thee down upon this flowery bed, while I thy amiable cheeks do coy, and stick musk roses in thy sleek smooth head, and kiss thy fair large ears, <laughs> my gentle joy. Where's Pete Blossom? Ready. Scrap my head, Pete Blossom. Where's Monsieur Cobweb? Ready. Monsieur Cobweb. Good Monsieur, get me your weapons in your hand, and kill me away to kill Bumblebee. Then, good Monsieur, bring me the honey bag. Then, good Monsieur, have care of the honey bag. Break not. I would be loath to have you overthrown with a honey bag, Seigneur. Where's Monsieur Mustard Seed? Ready. Monsieur Mustard Seed? What's your will? Nothing. Monsieur, what to help cavalry cobweb to scratch? <laughs> I must to the barbers, Monsieur, for methinks I am marvelous, hairy about the face. What, wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reasonable good ear in music. Or say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat. Truly, I could munch with good, dry oats. Methinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay, sweet hay. Ah, no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the swords, the squirrels hoard, and fetch thee new nuts. I have, had rather have a handful of two dried peas, but I pray you that none of your people stir me. I have a hmm, hmm, exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. For meeting her of late behind the wood, seeking sweet favors from this hateful fool, I did upbraid her and fall out with her when I had, at my pleasure, taunted her. And she, in mild terms, begged my patience. I then did ask of her her changeling child, which straight she gave me and her fairy sent to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And <laughs> gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he, awaking when the other do, may all to Athens back again repair and think no more of this night's accidents, but as the fierce vexation of a dream but first, I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou wast want to be. See as thou wast want to see. Diana's bud or Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. Oh, oh, oh my Oberon. What visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. <laughs> oh, came these things to pass. Oh, how mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Now thou and I are new in amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus' house triumphantly, and bless it to all fair prosperity. There shall the pairs of faithful lovers be wedded with Theseus all in jollity. Fairy king, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. 
than my queen. In silence sad, trip we after the night shade. We the globe can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. Sound. Music. Soft, what nymphs are these? My lord, this is my daughter here. And this, Lysander. This, Demetrius is. And this, Helena. Old Nadar's Helena. But speak, Aegis, is this not the day that Hermia should give answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Well, good morrow, friends. St. Valentine is past. Begin these wood birds but to couple now? <laughs> Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world? Uh, my lord, uh, I shall reply amazedly. Half wake, half sleeping, but as yet I swear I, I cannot truly say how I came here. Enough! Enough, my lord! You have enough! I beg the law, the law upon his head. They, they would have stolen away. They would have, Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me. Uh, my lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood. And I in fury hither followed them, fair Helena in fancy following me, uh, but my good Lord, I walk not by what power, but by some power it is. My love to Hermia melted as the snow. The object and the pleasure of mine eye is only Helena. To her, my Lord, was I betrothed ere I saw Hermia. But like in sickness did I loathe this food. Now I do wish it, love it, long for it and will forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Aegis, I will overbear your will. For in the temple, by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. These couples, away with us to Athens, three and three, will hold a feast and great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. These things seem small and undistinguishable. Methinks I see these things with parted eye when everything seems double. So methinks that I have found Demetrius like a jewel, mine own and not mine own. Are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Yea, and my father, and Hippolyta. And, and he did bid us follow to the temple. Why then, we are awake. Let's follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. When our next you come call me, my next is the fair Pyram. I know. Uh, Peter Quince, Flute, the Bellows Mender, Snout, the Tinker, Starve, I mean, God's my wife, stolen hands and left me asleep. <laughs> I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream past the wit of the man to say what dream it was. <laughs> Man is but an ass if we go about to expound this dream. He thought I was... Mm -hmm. uh, there is no man can tell what. He thought I was... 
I thought I had. Mm. Mm. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. And I shall sing it at the latter end of the play before the two. sent to Bottom's house. Has he come home yet? He cannot be heard of. If he come not, then the play is marred. He goes not forward, does it? It's okay. It's okay. It is not possible. <laughs> there is, is not a man in all Athens who can discharge Pyramus but he. No, he has simply the best wit of any handicraft man in Athens. Yeah, and the best person too. <laughs> oh. And he is a very paramour for a sweet voice. Ah! You, you must say paragon. A paramour is, God bless us, a, a thing of naught. <laughs> Masters, the Duke is coming from the temple, and there's two or three lords and ladies more married. If our sport had gone forward, we had all been made men. <laughs> oh, sweet, holy bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? Ah, ah. Bottom! Oh, most courageous day, almost happy hour! Masters! I am to disclose wonders. But ask me not what. For if I tell you, I am no true Athenian. Let us hear, sweet Bottom. Not a word from me. All I will tell you is that the Duke hath dined. Get your apparel together, meet presently at the palace. Every man, look or his part, for the short and the long is, our play is preferred. Oh, away! Away! Go away! <laughs> my Theseus, that these lovers speak of. More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains, such shaping fantasies that apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehends. But all this story of the night told over, and all their minds transfigured so together, more witnesses than fancies images, and grows to something of great constancy. But howsoever, strange and admirable. Oh, here come the lovers, full of joy and mirth. Joy, gentle friends. Joy and fresh days of love, accompany your hearts. More than to us, wait in your royal walks, your board and your bed. Come now, what masks, what dances shall we have between after supper and bedtime? Is there no play to anguish the uh, torturing hour? Uh, an impresario and his players, my lord. Let him enter. <coughs> yes. <clears throat> if we offend, it is with our good will. The, the, the actors, the actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all, all, all that you are like to know. <laughs> Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but just Wonder on, till truth make all things plain. This, 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 this man is Pyramus, if you would know, and, and this beauteous lady, Thisbe, it is certain. In this same interlude it doth befall, that I, one snout by name, present a wall, and such a wall I would have you think that had in it a crannied hole or chink. 
through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often their secrets. This loam, this rough hewn, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall. The truth is so. And this the cranny is, right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire Lyman here to speak better? It is the wittiest partition that I ever heard discourse, my lord. Oh, Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence! O oh, Rim, look night! O oh, night with you so black! O oh, night! Whichever art, one day it's not. O oh, night! O oh, night! Alack, alack, alack! I fear my thiz be promised his forgot. And now, O oh wall, O oh sweet, O oh lovely wall, that stands between her father's ground and mine. The wall, O oh wall, O oh sweet, O oh lovely wall, show me thy cheek to blink through with my name. Thanks, curious wall, Joe, she'll be well for this. But what see I? No Thisbe do I see, O oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss. Cursed be my stones for thus deceiving me. Oh, the wall methinks being sensible should curse again. No, in truth, he should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. O oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans, for parting my fair Pyramus and me. My cherry lips, I've often kissed thy stones, thy stones with lime and hair knit up in thee. I see a voice, thou will lie to the chink, to spy, and I can hear my Disney face. Disney! My love, my love, thou art my love, I think. Think what thou wilt, I am thy lover's grace. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. Wilt thou at Nimi's tomb meet me straight away? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. Thus have I, wall, my part discharged so. And being done, thus wall, away doth go. This is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. <laughs> The best in this kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worse if imagination amend them. It must be your imagination, then, and not theirs. Well, if we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. Here come two noble beasts in. You ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here. When lion rough in wildest rage doth roar, then know that I, one snug the joiner, am a lion fell, nor else no lion's dam. A very gentle beast of good conscience. Let us listen to the moon. This lantern doth the horn moon present. You should have worn the horns on his head. <laughs> oh, he, he is no crescent, and his horns are invisible within the circumference. This lantern doth the horned moon present, and I, the woman, do appear to be the moon. This is the greatest error of the rest. The man should be put in the lantern. How else is it the man in the moon? He dares not come there for the candle, for, you see, it is already in snuff. I am aweary of this moon. What he would change? It appears by a small light of discretion that he is in the wane, but yet, in courtesy, in all reason, we must stay the time. Proceed, Moon. All I have to say is to tell you that this lantern is the moon, and I, the woman in the moon. But silence, here comes Thisbe. This is old Nimmy's tomb. Where is my love? Roar! Well, well roared, lion. Well run, Thisbe. Well shown, Moon. Truly, the moon shines with a good grace. Well moused, Lion. And so the lion vanished. And then came Pyramus. With Moon, 
I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious, golden, glittering gleams, I trust to take the truest Bisbee's sight. The stay, O oh spite, but mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here. Eyes, can you see? How can it be? Oh, dainty duck, oh dear, thy mantle good. What? <sighs> Stained with blood. This passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. You shrew my heart, but I pity the man. Ouch! Sword and wound! Na 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 a pap of Pyramus had left pap where heart doth up ga Thus die I Thus 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 Now I am dead Now I am fled My soul is in the sky tongue Who's thy light? Oh, take thy flight now. Die. 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 No, die, but an ace for him, for he is. But one. <laughs> Less than an ace, man. Or he's dead. He's nothing. With the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover and prove an ass. How chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover? She will find him by starlight. Here she comes, and her passion ends the play. Uh, Methinks she should not use a long one for such a pyramus. Uh, I hope she will be brief. Asleep, my love? What's dead, my dove? O Pyramus, arise! Speak, speak, quite dumb? Dead, dead, a tomb must cover thy sweet eyes, these my lips. This cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks are gone, are gone. Lovers make moan, his eyes were green as leeks. Tongue, not a word, come, trusty sword, come, blade my breast imbue. And farewell, friends. Thus this be ends. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. I and Wall, too. No, I assure you, the wall is down that part of their fathers. Will it please you to see the epilogue? No epilogue, I pray you. For your play needs no excuse, never excuse, for when the players are all dead, there needs none to be blamed. Mary of he that writ it had played Pyramus and hanged himself in Thisbe's garter. It would have been a fine tragedy, and so it is truly and very notably discharged. Now the hungry lion roars, and the wolf behowls the moon, whilst the heavy plowman snores, all with weary task foredone. And we fairies that do run by the triple hecate steam from the presence of the sun, following darkness like a dream, now our frolic, not a mouse shall disturb this hallowed house. I am sent with broom before to sweep the dust behind the door. Through the house, give gathering light by the dead and drowsy fire. Every elf and fairy sprite, hot as light as bird from briar. Hand in hand with fairy grace, will we sing and bless this place. Trip away, make no stay, meet me all by break of day. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend, and as I am an honest puck, if we have the unearned luck now to scape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long, else the puck a liar call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends.
and Robin shall restore amends.